Hi there, in this particular video, we'll understand how to calculate the value in a swap contract. Again, the swap that I'm going to refer here is nothing but the interest rate swap. All right, because uh, one very important thing that you need to understand is given that you understand how to calculate the value in an interest rate swap, then and then only you'll be able to understand how to really calculate uh, the values in currency swaps. All right, so currency swaps would be one of the last topics that we'll be touching from this chapter. But yes, you need to understand interest rate swaps thoroughly so that you are able to understand currency swaps later all right so let's understand first thing first there is party a who is a fixed payer and a floating receiver all right because if he is paying fixed he'll be receiving floating interest rate all right and this party b given that this guy is uh, receiving floating who is uh, paying him floating the party b or as a party B is floating payer and fixed receiver. Why fixed receiver? Because this guy is paying fixed. So he's paying fixed, he's receiving fixed, he's paying floating, he's receiving floating. All right. Now my first question to you guys is that if the interest rate increases, all right, if the interest rate increases, who gains party A or party B? Yes, you're right, party A. All right. Why party A? Because interest rates has got interest rates have gone up. And he is going to receive those higher interest rates because he is receiving floating. And he is supposed to pay only the fixed rate that has been pre-decided. Alright, so the floating receiver gains when the interest rates go up because he is receiving the changed interest rates. And interest rates has changed in his favor by increasing. Alright, so question B is what if the interest rates go down? Who wins? The answer is pretty simple. Party B wins because he is paying floating now since he's paying floating he's paying the lowered interest rates all right so that is why he is winning and since he's receiving fixed so uh, definitely party b wins when the interest rates go down so that is something that you need to be clear with before you start you know calculating the value in an FRA con in a swap contract so uh, let's go back to the original question that we had that calculated the SFR that is a swap fixed rate at 4.4 percent with a notional principle of five million dollars all right uh, remember that the notional principle do not really change hands neither in FRA contract nor in interest rate swaps all right currency swaps would be something where we'll be seeing notional principles actually changing hands so but till now whatever we have learned we will not see any notional principle changing hands all right so that is it uh, the original contract that we had was made on a quarterly basis and the payments were to be made on the 90th day 180th day 270th day and 368th day however right now we are standing on the 180th day and we have made two payments all right two exchanges have been already taken place for fixed for floating on the 90th day as well as on the 180th day the two payments that are left on the 270th day and on the 368th day now there are some changes that have happened to the interest rate curve all right say for example whatever LIBOR we had at time period zero based on that we had calculated the SFR all right now <coughs> Now, standing on the 180th day, we have two more LIBORs that is for 90 days starting from here. That is from 180 to 270 days, 90 days that we have in hand. For that, we have a LIBOR of 3.5%. Again, this rate is an annualized rate, but it is for 90 days time period. And the another LIBOR that we have is for 180 days. Uh, we're standing here till this point in time, and the rate is nothing but 3.5%. All right. So those are the two LIBORs that we have. Uh, here it is mentioned to us clearly we need to figure out uh, who is gaining value here whether party a or party b all right before we start doing that what we need to do is we need to again calculate uh, the price the sfr price as we did in the fra contract we calculated the calculated the new uh, new fra price in the very same way we need to calculate the new swap rate as well all right so the idea is simple again we'll be calculating the z factors for 90 days and 180 days standing here so the z factors would be calculated as 1 upon 1 plus LIBOR into 90 by 360 for the first time period so that number would be 0 0.035 into 90 upon 360 plus 1 that is 0 0.9913 and likewise 0 0.035 into 180 divided by 360 plus 1 0.9828 all right, so we have these two discount factors. Uh, we need to calculate the new rate. All right, what, what the new rate would be? Uh, that would be 1 minus 9828 divided by the sum of both the numbers. That would be 1.9741. 1 minus 0.9828 
divided by 1.9741. This is 0 0.0087. Multiplied by 4, we get 3.5%. Why am I multiplying it by 4? Because the rate that we are calculating is again a quarterly rate because all our payments are being made in quarterly terms and this is again a quarterly rate that we have arrived at. Now we need to calculate the value of the swap contract. All right. First thing first, the interest rates have gone down. All right. The swap rate has gone down. Since the swap rate has gone down, uh, definitely, you know, the party B would be winning. All right. Party B would be winning. So that is something that we need to figure out. All right. So let's see how it works out. So value of swap would be calculated as the new SFR minus the old SFR into 90 upon 360 multiplied by the uh, notional principle that we have. All right, these two payments, whatever amount we get here, all right, these payments would be made at this point in time, 270th day and on 360th day as well. So what we are going to do is we will be calculating these two numbers. All right, and we'll be discounting this value to 180th day and this value as well to the 180th day. All right, so whatever number we get here, all right, that one payment would be made here and that is to be discounted here, not the payment with the value, I would say, and the other values will be calculated here, which needs to be discounted till this point in time. All right, so uh, let's do the calculation 0 0.035 minus 0 0.044 divided by 4 into 5 million. So that is 1, 1. 250. All right. This particular number would be this particular value is here, and at the very same time, it is here as well. So what we need to do is we need to bring them back. All right. We need to discount it, it to this time period, and we need to discount it, it to this time period. Uh, rather than discounting, we can also use the discount factors that we have. So 11250 multiplied by 0.9913 plus 11250 and multiplied by 0.9828. What are we doing here with this particular value? We are basically discounting this 11250 from here to here and with this particular value what are we doing? We are uh, discounting this 11250 from 368 to the 180th day. Alright, we can also apply some maths here, take 11250 common, multiply, put uh, 0.9913 plus 0.9828. So, oh, which is nothing but the denominator, sum of the z's that we have. So, that would be 11250 multiplied by 0 0.9913 plus 0.9828. That is 1.9741, which is nothing but um, 11250. This will be, this is the value that we have arrived at. All right. So I can make this change in the formula itself to calculate the value of the swap. Uh, first calculating this and then multiplying it by the discount factors. So all right, we calculated this number here itself. What we can do is we can multiply this by the sum of discount factors and that is what we're doing it later on. So rather than doing that here, we can simply put in the formula here. Sum of discount factors multiplied by these numbers. Again, into sum of discount factors. All right, so we'll get this answer. Thank you.